It's pretty clear that some tanks are better than others, but after all the radical changes to the game in the past season, most of them are good enough to be viable. Even Roadhog is dangerous and tanky when left uncountered. There's also a lot of new ways to play and new techniques that can give you a massive advantage on otherwise weak heroes. So let's get into one pro tip for every tank, starting with D.Va. Abuse your armor and range. She's got so much armor that she doesn't need to sit on her own backline all the time, so make sure to roam aggressively to deal damage. Even beam heroes who shoot through your matrix can still take up to 5 seconds to break all your armor, giving you ample time to deal more damage or force more abilities in return. Her guns are a lot more consistent and further ranges now, so it's a lot easier than you might think to force all of Zarya's bubbles or Sigma's whole shield and grasp. Playing far up can also be the only way to win against spammy backline heroes, and you can pretty easily take them out. Her burst damage with micro-missiles is enough to kill any hero who's caught off guard. Playing around your armor health is important for a lot of the following tanks on the list, but for D.Va it's especially abusable. Top tier mobility and top tier mitigation makes her one of the best tanks for limit testing and playing just a bit too aggressive. If you want to grind the meta or rank up on your favorite heroes, use the link in the description to get access to a Game Leap membership. There are tons of courses and guides to help you improve faster and easier. Check it out and enjoy the video. On to the next, we've got Doomfist. Play to live more so you can dive more. He's punchy and quick, but can be pretty vulnerable in long fights. But with just a bit of patience, it's a lot easier to survive. Playing around your block the same way you do around your movement makes sure that you can always turn around any situation, even if it's just baiting abilities and escaping with a power punch. Building up the punch is obviously really good for your engage, but it's also really important to wait until you have your block ready again before you go for the 30 meter backline execution. It flies fast and it's got a big hitbox, but missing it makes sure you'll be on the run for the next 15 seconds. Doom can dump a ton of cooldowns trying to get a pick, but it's most important to survive the engage to be able to contest high grounds and tanks later. His primary fire damage has also gotten to a nice level of consistency where he can poke a bit as he walks up. If everyone's scared of feeding you empowered punch, you can even save your abilities and just take space the boring way, shooting and walking, just like Junker Queen, next up on the list. Time your abilities between your shots. She's a high burst damage hero, but only if you master all of her animation cancels. Her scatter gun deals good damage and has a slow rate of fire, which allows you to throw your knife between shots for extra burst. Anytime you can use an ability without slowing down your shotgun rhythm is valuable, and that also applies to pulling back your knife after throwing it. Since the Overwatch 2 beta, players have gotten better, and I see a lot of queens throwing the knife right after shooting, but if they miss, they instantly recall. Don't forget that pulling back the knife also has an animation that slows down your damage output, so just like you wait between shots to throw your knife, you should also wait to pull it in. Recently, Queen has become a lot easier to poke out and then chase, so hitting your shots is really important to keep enemies tagged enough that they can't muster a full push on your position. Next up is Malga. Use your burn chain gun to force out abilities and heroes. After his nerfs, it can feel a lot harder to enter the fight, but his primary fire ignition effect makes him really good at setting up picks. The fire damage adds up and makes it hard for anyone affected to keep fighting. They're also marked for crits of course, although it gets a lot less bursty as the spread gets too wide at long range. The important thing is to use that ignition to your advantage. Malga gets a lot out of focusing tanks, but DPS are still the real carries. At least for Malga, you don't need to peek them for long to set them on fire. You just need 10 consecutive shots, with at most 2 seconds between each shot. If you really min-max, you can peek with full health and instantly ignite someone to force them away, which works really well for the tank matchup. Healing up Malga to full is hard with his massive hitbox taking so much damage, but he does have armor, and although it's not as much as D.Va, it's enough to look for some burns before you get committed to the fight, forcing out heroes that would otherwise be spamming you as you walk. Next is Orisa. Find angles to spam DPS and supports. She can be a pretty dull hero sometimes, but her range and armor make her another high value spam hero. Shooting at tanks and stopping them from walking is good, but when you're in a matchup where you don't easily beat the other tank, it's not as worth it. No fall off means your damage can really add up even at super far ranges. If you see someone at range without line of sight to the support, you can tag them from far away and ping them to make them a non-threat for a good while. Shooting supports is even better because it really disrupts the flow of the enemy team. If you get someone low enough, you can even go for the javelin finisher. Or if you're intentionally looking to force abilities, starting with it works too. A Kiriko hit with a javelin and then your spam is going to teleport, or even better, Suzu. Orisa may have to break through the front line to get on top of the back line, but she can still find ways to pressure enemies without fully committing. Onto her mantra with one of the most complicated tips ever. Use your nemesis form less often. Although he can't compete with how good Orisa is at spamming backline, when fighting tanks or other big hitbox heroes, your Omnic form is usually a lot better than your Nemesis form. Each punch may be 60 damage, but the fire rate isn't 2 punches a second. It actually deals 100 DPS compared to Omnic form's 125. The headshot potential makes it even better when you've got your slow. Orisa and Malga normally have a pretty good matchup into Ram, but he can turn it around with good headshot focus. He's actually the only tank that can both shield and headshot. For those 5 seconds the shield is up, you can really do a lot of damage, so try not to stack your shield and Nemesis form unless you're planning to win the fight in one quick burst. It'll leave you a lot less survivable after the Nemesis form ends otherwise. Moving on to Reinhardt. Setup point fights are on cover. He may be doing better, but the games aren't easy. The best way he fits in right now is like a melee Sigma, shielding his DPS for spam or contesting the objective with his insane hammer burst damage. On specifically every payload and push map, you can make the game a lot easier by stopping the car on corners and cover. And on attack, Reinhardt is a great payload force. Tracer can only take one swing before recall, so she's actually well matched if you wait out her blinks. Being forced onto payload isn't great, but it's just a very simple and effective way to use Ryan's massive shield health. Rotating for too long burns your resources before you even get to your target, and frontline tanks don't just die to Ryan pushes anymore. Ryan's played for his shield and his close range damage is a nice bonus. It's just too hard to bring that damage to the enemy, so by playing the objective, you can make them come to the damage instead. Next up is Roadhog. Play more for your hook than your pig pen combo. Hog's one shot with his trap is great, but it also makes him really predictable and slow. 
peeking a corner with a trap, and then your hook gives both a warning and a little bit of extra time to react. The cast time of the trap is just long enough to make it clunky. Although the trap is really important for securing kills, and especially melting tanks you can catch, keep looking for normal hooks as much as you can. It's easy to tunnel vision on the trap one shot, but if the enemy team's ready for it, they'll either dodge or counter your hook. Nowadays, there are a lot of short cooldown abilities that can interrupt it too. You won't be able to hook off cooldown safely all the time. Switching your position as Hog is already a must for playing him, so you might as well time it with your hook cooldown to keep that good disruption going. Now for Sigma, save both your grasp and rock for the mid fight. Sigma's shield is really strong and it lets him play pretty aggressively even without heals, but make sure not to blow your other cooldowns for early advantages just because you can somewhat stabilize later. Sigma doesn't have the raw damage reduction that Arissa has, but he's still hard to kill because each of his abilities have a ton of potential, but throwing rocks 20 meters away or using grasp just against Sigma doesn't reach that. He's got infinite ammo, 20 meter range, and a quick deploying shield. That's already a lot both offensively and defensively, so unless you're playing into a composition that can't really kill you, saving your other abilities will massively help you stay in the fight and counter push later. Kinetic grasp is great for absorbing range damage, but it's underrated as a 2 second matrix. That's a lot of time to soak front facing damage while being pushed, and it definitely makes it easier for your supports to react to everyone trying to kill you. Saving your accretion is also worth it. Without it, Ram and Arissa would have a much easier time running you down. Now for Winston. Weave melees into your primary fire, but not against armor. It's a bit complicated, but Winston's Tesla Cannon works a lot differently compared to when XQC played. It now deals 75 DPS and ignores armor, which means spamming melees against armor will now do less damage than if you just kept zapping. The melee gets reduced to 28 damage, even lower than what it used to be before Season 9. Spamming melee against all other health is better than before though. Now that melee deals 40 damage, it actually increases your DPS slightly, by 2.5 DPS. This is probably the slightest slightly ever, but the important thing is that it doesn't reduce your damage like it does against armor. This matters more when fighting Arissa and D.Va, since whether up in your face forcing you out of the fight, stick to your Tesla cannon, and when you're fighting another Winston, make sure to keep your melees until after the armor is broken, even though you'll both probably reposition before that happens. With just two tanks to go, it's Wrecking Ball next. Tap your movement keys when you want to roll quietly. Ball's damage is pretty good, but he still struggles at setting up dives. There are a lot of boops and stuns, and just a lot of focus fire that you're better off not dealing with. Being undetected is the way to go, but when rolling, Ball makes a pretty loud sound that tells you when he's coming up on the flank from behind you. However, if you just tap your movement keys instead of holding them, you drastically reduce the sound of your rolling. You'll move slower, of course, but it's the movement speed that makes the rumbling sound you want to avoid. By staying quiet, you massively reduce the chance of missing your boop or slam, and you can catch a lot of supports off guard with your sneaky behavior. Hitting the first couple of headshots is easy when your targets are looking at someone else. And now for our final tank, Zarya. Always prioritize ally bubbles over self bubbles. With increased damage, Zarya is a lot more dangerous on the front line, but it's not the best place to be. Even though being in main or up front puts you in good range for your beam length, it also makes your self bubbles easier to force. 8 second bubble cooldowns are really good in season 9, but it's right back to 10 seconds if you have to put it on yourself. This takes more careful positioning, and ideally a DPS that can use your bubble to play further up. Tanks need to take space, but Zarya doesn't do it through brute force. She can dish out enough damage, but she can't take as much of it back. Instead, use well placed friendly bubbles to win duels or force out angles. Even a bubble tracer on the objective will get good value. You don't have to take the space yourself to make it, but after you've built up some good energy from your supportive play, you can start taking charge again. If you can melt half the enemy tank's health before they start to push on you, it's a lot easier to avoid getting overwhelmed. That's it for one pro tip for every tank season 9. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.